My lifelong dream, as far as I could remember, was to make a career of the Marine Corps. So after high school, I came to Fort Worth where my parents were. They were divorced. I was raised by my aunt and uncle. So I went down to the Marine recorder, recruiter downtown Fort Worth and told him I wanted to enlist. And he looked me over and he said, we've met our quota for this month. I was six foot one and about 125 pounds. <laughs> and he said, go down the hall, talk to the Army. So I went down the hall, walked in, I said, I don't want to enlist. And he said, look me over and he said, okay, get all the sign-ups and everything. Sent me to Dallas for my physical. Couldn't pass, couldn't make the weight. For my height, I had to weigh 136 pounds, nude. And there I am weighing about 125 fully dressed. So I go home and start working for my cousin as an auto mechanic. I worked on cars all my life. Tried to gain weight, ate everything I could. Went back to the recruiter, sent me back to Dallas. Once again, turned down, didn't wait enough. Finally, the third trip, when I went back, I had a friend told me, he said, if you will eat a lot of bananas and drink water, it will make you heavy and you can pass. So I stayed up all night in the Jefferson Hotel in Dallas, eating bananas, drinking water, walked in, and they recognized me. I'd been there twice already, so they recognized me. They said, Reed, don't take off your clothes or anything, get on the scales. I weighed 135, fully dressed. And they said, you want in this bad, we're gonna take you. So off I went to Fort Polk, Louisiana. And when I got to the reception area that night, I was scared to death. I learned later as a normal procedure, they had somebody that would whistle in the crowd, then they had the sergeants walk around wanting to know who it was and really intimidating speech and what have you to all the re recruits that were coming in. Survived that, didn't know how, because I was scared to death. We got sent to our barracks, had a drill sergeant, maybe five foot five, came into the barracks that night and he said, I want the meanest, toughest man in this barrack to step forward. We had this uh, pretty good sized old boy walked up and said, yes, what can I do? He said, I'm gonna kick your butt. And he said, but I didn't do anything. He said, you will address me as Drill Sergeant Sir. So he said, I didn't do anything, Drill Sergeant Sir. And he said, I just wanna cut down on all the problems. He said, I'm your hand-to-hand -hand combat instructor, and if I take you outside and kick your butt, then I won't have any trouble with the rest of these guys. And of course, it didn't happen. So we went into our training, and we were informed that we would have seven straight weeks, no weekends off or anything, because it was close to the holidays. And I survived that. I thought it was terrible at the time, but when I look back on it, it was fine. You know, something anyone can do. And that was during the time when Congress had passed laws that you couldn't touch a recruit. So they would put us under the barbed wire crawling on our stomachs. We all started to say, keep your butt down or I'll kick your butt and you can call all the congressmen you want to because I'm going to save your life. They aren't. <laughs> and we survived all that. So we finished basic training and we all get our orders for AIT. I get orders that has APO on it, and I don't know what that is. So I go up to my drill sergeant, and I said, Drill sergeant, sir, I, I don't understand these orders. It's got APO on here instead of AIT. What is that? And he said, well, they've made a mistake. If APO means you're going overseas. He said, go down to personnel, and they'll get it straightened out. So I go down to personnel, go in, uh, talked to the people and they said, no, you were a mechanic before you enlisted, so you're a mechanic now, you're going to Germany. So I got a 30 day leave, then I got shipped off to Fort Dix, New Jersey, coldest place I'd ever been in my life. <laughs> we were in a empty barracks and we were stealing mops off of other barracks, burning them for heat. Anything we could find that we could put in that stove, we were getting it to burn it. And luckily we survived that and then we found out that we were one of the first groups that were going to be flying over instead of going by ship and that was good. So we got into Frankfurt, Germany on New Year's Eve. 